how do you do what you think is the impossible? Like, I never thought that in a million years, I'd ever get to the point of making six figures, half a million dollars, a million dollars. I always thought that was impossible, especially a kid like me from an average and ordinary neighborhood, immigrant parents from the Philippines, went to the Marine Corps for eight years, making $20,000 a year as a sergeant. I had never thought that becoming financially independent was ever something that I can do until I'd started to discover what the wisest and richest king who ever lived named King Solomon, who wrote the book in the Bible in the Old Testament called Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. And he talked about something called diligence. What is diligence? Let's have a quick review of the definition of diligence. See here in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, it reads, Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Simply put, diligence is this. Let's put up a definition of it. Diligence is a learnable skill that combines creative persistence, a smart working effort rightly planned and rightly performed in a timely, efficient and effective manner to attain a result that is pure and of the highest quality of excellence. And I'm getting that definition from this book, The Richest Man Who Ever Lived, written by Stephen K. Scott. Because here's the other part. There's a difference between hard work and smart work. I see a lot of people that can work really, really hard. You know, oftentimes I get asked, hey Matt, what's the greatest skill that you learned from being in the Marine Corps? Easy thing is for us to answer is hard work. We can work hard, we can work hard, we can work hard. But I know there's many times that we've been in the Marine Corps that we worked hard, but it really wasn't smart. Like we would do certain things that was just for the effort of doing that. Said, oh, we're Marines, but it wasn't smart. There's a difference between hard work and smart work. For example, if you were asked to cut down a tree, would you cut down a tree with a hammer? I mean, you could work really hard and boom, boom with a hammer and eventually over time work really, really hard, but then eventually over hours, days, weeks, depending how big this tree is, you can be hammering, hammering, hammering away to try to cut down this tree. Or would you be smart and say, hey, let me get an ax or even better, let me get a chainsaw. See, there's a difference between hard work and smart work. And sometimes, most times in difficult situations, you get to realize what is the difference between smart work and hard work. And how do I accomplish something without necessarily putting in all this effort, but how do I smartly apply my time and effort. See, I'm in the sales business in the insurance industry. I see a lot of salespeople sometimes say, Matt, I'm at the office. I work really hard, work really hard. But when it comes to smart work, are you busy or are you actually productive? Because I see a person that's diligent that can work one or two or three hours, be out for lunch into appointments and accomplish so much in a week versus somebody who's at the office distracted, different websites, different videos, not making their phone calls. Yes, they're working hard potentially, but not working smart at all, and their week turns into two weeks, turns into three weeks of zero productivity. See, there's a big difference between hard work and smart work. The next thing here is our human nature. You gotta understand our human nature desires nothing more than to be lazy. That's why most people who don't find passion in their work, they don't find purpose in their career or business, they cannot wait till Friday. The TGI Friday mentality says, man, I cannot wait. Why? Because our natural disposition is to be lazy. We want instant gratification. Now, the recording of this video, it's going into February of the new year. How many people do you think who had New Year's resolution at the beginning of the year, right by right now, have probably given up on their New Year's resolution? Do you know why they've probably given it up? I mean, the joke in the gym is, if you want your equipment back, you want your normal routine back and not be clogged up at the gym again, just wait till February and March and the gym will be right back where it was before the new year. Why? Because our natural disposition as human beings is lazy, instant success. How many of you have heard that terminology, Netflix and chill? Everybody wants to do just Netflix and chill, hang out, go binge watch TV, sitting on their butt, on the couch. And by the way, this is not a popular message. Hard work is a very difficult message to sell. You know it's easier to sell? Just take it easy. Kick your feet up, relax, and potentially success is coming your way. But according to Solomon, that is not diligence. That's laziness. So here are seven benefits of actually applying diligence in your life. Let's look at number one. If you apply diligence in your life, into your work, into your finances, into your career, into your business, you're gonna have a distinct advantage. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 21, verse five. It reads like this. The plans 
of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. See, when you have plants and you're diligent, you're applying yourself, you're going to have a distinct advantage versus somebody that's just shooting from the hip. Number two, the benefit of diligence is you're going to have control. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. It reads like this. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. You see, if you want to lose control, if you want to have something else yanking you left and right, well, guess what? Don't operate in diligence. Number three, the benefit of diligence is fulfillment. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. It reads like this. The sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Again, that word keeps coming up. Diligent, 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 diligence. It gives you fulfillment. Not the lazy person, not the sluggard. They may want, they may crave, but if they're lazy and sluggish about things that they want because they're not operating in diligence, they get nothing. They may be satisfied for a minute, but guess what? They're going to constantly crave and they will not be fulfilled. Number four, benefit of diligence is you're respected and you're sought after. Here's one of my favorite ones. Go to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. It reads like this. Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. So if you want to have influence, you want to, you want to have respect, not only amongst your peer group, but respect amongst the people that you look up to and the people they look up to, and you want to be sought after, you want to be consulted, you want your advice, your influence upon the endeavors of other people, guess what? Operate in diligence because you're going to be giving counsel and advice to kings and leaders. Number five, another benefit of diligence, it needs are satisfied. Your needs will be satisfied. Go to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 19. It reads like this. He who works his land, not sitting on his land, he who works his land will have abundant food, but the one who chases fantasies will have his fill of poverty. I'll tell you this. I used to love video games. I love video games. I was one of the guys who had the first PS1, but the moment I figured I was spending all this time in fantasy land, living a life that I wasn't living. I was winning through the game, but I wasn't winning in my finances. I wasn't winning as a dad. I wasn't winning as an entrepreneur. I wasn't winning as somebody leading. And I realized being in a fantasy land, according to this, again, if you choose fantasy, you're going to have poverty. Now, with that being said, I know, well, Matt, you can't say that about esports. Okay, I get it. Esports. You want to compete? I, I, get, I get gaming is a big thing these days. But listen, man, a lot of these uh, fantasy, same thing too with books reading novels and all these different things, is it really helping you advance your life? Are you caught up in a story, in a storyline of something else? Number six, increasing success. The benefit of diligence is increasing success. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 11. It reads like this. This honest money dwindles away. So you can make money. It says you can be, you, you can be in a position of dishonesty, you can still have money. But guess what? It says he is going to dwindle away. But he who gathers money little by little makes it grow. Because that's what diligent people do. They make it, they save it. They make it, they save it. They make it, tie it, save it, boom. They make it, tie it, save it, boom. Make it, tie it, save it, boom. So therefore, the, the things that you like to enjoy, like the fancy cars and the homes and the jewelry, all that stuff, guess what? It's going to be the cost of buying a cup of coffee. Because in the meantime, guess what? You're diligent. Listen, I've seen my own personal mentor, Patrick Bet David, be diligent in his work. I, I witnessed him every day, every week, every month for the last six years, diligent in his work. I've seen his YouTube channel go from four or 5,000 people to today, it's 2.8 million subscribers. Why? Every week, diligence. His team, diligence. Every aspect of them building their business was increasing their diligence. And guess what? They have increasing success. Number seven, you want to have diligence? You want to have profits in your business? You want to have a profitable fine in, in your finances? Guess what? You want to be diligent. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. It reads like this. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Again, I see a lot of people with a good game, man. It's funny how people can show a good game. Social media gives us an opportunity to show a good game. But uh, if you're not willing to work hard behind the scenes, you, oftentimes people think they can just sit behind the computer and push a couple buttons and, right, or invest in a couple properties or invest in a couple things and think that passive income is going to be their, their, their thing without actually working the business, without actually working the details, without actually applying diligence in all aspects of that business. 
again, you might make a profit in one month, two months, one year, two years, but if you're not applying diligence, you'll not be profitable long-term. You might have money in the short term, but long-term, you will not be profitable. Why? Because you're not applying diligence.